Hi everyone, we are back and we are into lecture three, defects in crystal materials. So I always like to start off with this lecture with my favorite quote from Professor Sir Colin Humphreys. Crystals are like people, the defects in them, uh, it's the defects in them which tend to make them interesting. And I butchered that quote, as usual. So, um, we've been talking so far about and studying kind of perfect crystals. Um, and we know that everything in terms of energy boils down to this fundamental equation, minus T, delta S, our Gibbs free energy equation. So a crystal is basically at a state of thermodynamic equilibrium when our free energy is minimized. Basically when D delta G with respect to some variable is equal to zero. So when are we humans in equilibrium? Unfortunately, that only happens when we are dead. Uh, so that's not good. So we want to make sure that we uh, don't do that. So let's stay out of equilibrium. We are non-equilibrium entities. But as we can see in this equation here, we have basically these two knobs. Um, that we can uh, basically lower our free energy. We could either have delta H decrease, and we saw that that you know, occurs in lecture one due to these favorable enthalpic interactions. So basically interactions that are favorable. Or, so that is enthalpy, or we can entropy here, we could increase delta S because again, we have this uh, minus sign. So if we increase the number of entropic states, if we increase the number of microstates, microstates, then our free energy decreases. So uh, again, we've kind of did this last time via binding. Again, we minimize, we change delta H. And at the limit of t equals zero, our, our basically the perfect crystal structure is the one that is the equilibrium configuration. But as temperature increases, atoms tend to kind of move around and bounce. And uh, the free energy actually can be minimized by adopting this more kind of disordered-like structure. Um, that is not a perfect light crystal because we increase the number of entropic states. So uh, entropy increases when we have imperfections. So we have, when, we have no, when we have a larger number of microstates here. Um, so the equilibrium state, uh, the key thing here is that when temperature is not zero, when T is not equal to zero, the equilibrium state will often most likely have imperfections. And we can calculate basically what are going to be the equilibrium concentrations by looking at how does free energy change and how does delta S and delta H change as we kind of add these imperfections. So as we add these imperfections, delta S is going to increase, but our delta H is also going to increase, and that is not because there's some cost to forming these defects. But again, it's the balance, right? It's how much is in this increase versus this uh, increase. So unfortunately, the material science is always this kind of this balancing act. We can never basically, um, it's, and it's going to be, you're going to see this repeat throughout our course. Um, if we increase entropy, usually we have to pay a cost in enthalpy. Um, if we make a material more ductile, we lose in strength. If we make a material stronger, we lose in terms of ductility. Um, so it's always this kind of give and take. So, but the key thing to look at this and kind of think about this number of microstates, let's think about a perfect crystal structure here where I have just these six atoms. So in this, particular, uh, in this perfect crystal, where all the atoms are the same, they're indistinguishable, what are going to be the number of distinct microstates? One. But now if I instead add a vacancy here, this is one distinct microstate, right? I could draw another microstate like this. So this is one microstate here. This is two microstates here. So I can draw uh, a large number, a permutation of these microstates, and actually we're going to kind of look at this. It's going to be kind of your old friend, hopefully you know. If there's n number of these particles plus n, little n, excuse me, plus little n number of defects, n plus n factorial divided by n factorial. It's your binomial uh, distribution. Again, you don't have to worry about that too much in this class, but the number of microstates increases dramatically. Um, so the way that you can reconfigure those uh, values. So I just skipped forward and actually mentioned um, vacancies. So let's go ahead and let's actually look at some zero D defects, some crystalline point defects before we get into kind of vacancies and the equilibrium concentrations. So let's just take a peek uh, here. So let's imagine, let's actually look at, where is my... Where's my beautiful figure that I drew for this course? Oh, actually, it's not in here. It's going to be in. Sorry, let me go back to our lecture notes. So let's go ahead and let's look at this figure that I've kind of drawn here. So if I have a perfect lattice of just these kind of particles here, again, it's supposed to be uh, basically this kind of perfect, you know, kind of you know square structure. But anyways, uh, if I have this kind of perfect crystal, I could have these zero D defects, i.e., point defects. 
So a vacancy is where, ideally, in the perfect crystal, we should have another blue atom sitting right here. But we don't, so it's missing. So that is a vacancy. It's vacant. That site, which is supposed to be filled, is vacant. It's not there. <laughs> vacancy, vacancy, vacancy. That's what I keep saying over and over again. Uh, if instead we have the single type of atom and we replace it with another type, so let's say that this is copper and then this is a zinc. So if we dope, if we create an alloy, we're going to be getting into that. If we substitute some type of impurity atom in a location where we should have our, you know, kind of our native or our host crystal, that is going to be a substitutional impurity. I could also have an interstitial impurity. So an interstitial, these are interstitial sites. So it's sites basically in between kind of the host, you know, kind of your lattice. So I could squeeze interstitials like in between, like inter or between, you know, uh, kind of these sites. So this interstitial site sits right in the kind of middle of your kind of host lattice sites. And then finally, you could also have, now there's other point defects as well, but um, the ones that we'll kind of most deal with, if for some reason, again, due to this increase in entropy, if we have an interstitial or an atom here in our host bounce and uh, basically sit in the self-interstitial, that's another type of defect. And you can see kind of the atoms are kind of pushing in here, right? So like there's kind of some basically, you know, uh, basically compressive force, like this atom is being squeezed, whereas these atoms will be kind of pulled in here. So they're going to be pushed out. So there's kind of some tension, some pushing it back on the atoms. The atoms are going to kind of relax back in here. So you're going to see that creating a self-interstitial, uh, well, actually, creating a self-interstitial is going to be much more difficult than creating a uh, vacancy. But we'll get into that uh, a little bit uh, later on. So let's go ahead and actually we'll go ahead and look at that a little bit later. So next time in the next video, we are going to get into um, basically looking at the concentration of these kind of vacancies. And then we'll also look at, uh, basically we'll use this Boltzmann constant. There's my figure. Uh, so we could have done it right there. We'll look at the equilibrium, equilibrium concentration of vacancies. We'll look at the equilibrium concentration of uh, basically self-interstitials as well. And we'll kind of look and kind of see uh, how that will be different. Um, again, self-interstitials are going to be a little bit different than uh, for uh, basically uh, than for uh, vacancies. So we'll kind of look at that and kind of get into that. So I will see you all in the next video and get ready for a little derivation that might uh, use you. You might have to kind of recall the Stirling approximation. So I'll see you then. Thanks.